So this is part <clears throat> two of Unit 4A, and I failed to mention something. For question one, the uh, please look at page 202, example five, and that will further explain the justification for our conclusion for question one. Also, for question four, if you look at page 200, you can gain more insights. Now let's go on to question five, and again we're going to look at page 202, example 5. And this gentleman, and it, we'll use this chart here too, and this gentleman spends, has an income of $3,100 and spends of $1,020 on rent, which is about one-third. And notice the average rent is, here's our chart, here's 30%. And the average rent is just a little over 30 percent, about 33 percent. So he's in the ballpark on that. He's at average. Now, number six, you currently drive 360 miles a week in a car that gets 20 miles per gallon of gas. So I've, I've collected this data, and you can read through this, but let's compare uh, let's use the chart to go through this thing. So the cost of a new car, and we want to find out which cheaper to operate over five years, the new car or the old car. So the cost of the new car is $12,000. And the insurance for the old car is $600 a year, where the insurance for the new is 900 per year. The repairs for the old are about 1400 per year, and there's no repairs for the new car. When you use dimensional analysis to compute the gas cost per year, the, uh, uh, the miles here will divide out, uh, the weeks will divide out, uh, gallons will divide out, and we're left with about $3,276 per year. Going through the same dimensional analysis, for the new car we get about $1,092 per year. So when you total up these expenses plus the uh, gas for one year, the old car costs you about $5,276, whereas the new car costs $1,992 per year plus the $12,000 you paid for the new car. Now, let's keep going with this problem. So after five years, if we multiply this thing times five, this is 5,276, we get a uh, cost in five years of $26,380, and that's per five years. Whereas we go through a similar evaluation for the new car, we come up with 2100 $21,960, and that's for the five years, and notice we've included the uh, cost of the car. So the new car is less expensive by, and finding the difference of these two values, by $4,420, so that's pretty significant over five years. For seven, the uh, question is, how long will it take uh, in how many years will it take for the uh, the uh, new car to cost as much as the old car? When will we be at equilibrium? So the cost of the new car, old car is $5,276 per year. So that in terms of an, uh, uh, an expression, that's 5276 times T years. Whereas the cost of the new car is 1,992t t years plus the 12,000 it costs for that. So when we uh, get all the t's on one side, everything else on the other, find the difference of the two, which we did, and then isolate t, we've got 12,000 divided by 3,284. And so after 3.7 years, that's when the cost of 
owning the old car and the cost of owning the new car uh, uh, are at an equilibrium. Now, let's go on to question eight. And uh, so we've got an annual income of $25,000 and uh, we've got to cut back on something. You can read the question, question eight here. We've got to cut back on something. And so the vacation each year costs $1,100. The movie, we go to this movie for $15 a week, and we go 52 weeks a year, so that's $780 a year. And we buy a smoothie at $450 a day, and for 365 days per year, days divide out, and here the weeks divide out. And uh, so that totals to $1,825 per year. So, um, what do we need to cut back on? Well, I guess we better cut back on these smoothies because they're costing us uh, quite a bit more than the other two options. And so now we're done.